Don't you love statements like this? There are two kinds of people in the world. Two, that's it. Dogs and cats, when it comes to communication. That's it, dogs and cats. I've, I've simplified all of the Myers-Briggs, all of the insights, all of that, where you end up with 55 different kinds of people. I say, no, let's just go with two. <laughs> the fun thing and the important thing is to know who you are and then be able to recognize who the other person is. Dogs are the people that are like this. Oh, I got something to say. I got something. Can I say? I got something to say. I got this thing that I got to say. No, no, wait, wait. I know. I know we had an agenda today, but um, I got this thing I really want to say. Okay, it's really important, and I'm going to say it now. Okay, it's, oh, is that right? Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Right. I said it. Great. Oh, there's another thing, and they go on like this, and they kind of tend to can kind of dominate the proceedings. The thing about the dogs is, yeah, there's a lot of energy there. You know where you stand with them. And they are open and transparent because they are absolutely saying whatever is in their mind comes out of their mouth. There is no filter, it just comes right out. So there's no mystery. And of course the downside is they can seem a little needy, can waste a little time, and might come across as being domineering because of this sort of slight disrespect for the rules. The other type is the cat. And you all know these people too. They are like, I am patiently waiting my turn to speak so that I can say the very precise thing that I've worked out to say. <laughs> it will be accurate and verifiable. You can look it up. <laughs> right? Those are the cats. And they do just that. They wait to speak because they have it worked out. They know what they're going to say. And they're very respectful of time at a meeting. They are very, uh, very precise, and they, they do have backup for what they say. Of course, the downside is you always wonder, do they hate me? What's the problem? Why are they acting like that? I wish they would open up more, right? So if you get dogs and cats together, there's an uncomfortable mix sometimes. If you get cats with cats and dogs with dogs, there tends not to be. The dogs may beat each other up, the cats may all sit in silence, but everybody's happy. If you get dogs and cats, it's when you start to have misunderstandings of why, why does she just not talk to me? Why doesn't she talk to me? You know? Or the other side, why does he keep talking all the time, all the time, all the time? Let me ask you this. Do you sometimes feel, if you have a staff that you have to address and work with, do you sometimes feel they're not listening to you? Sometimes get that feeling. Well, that's because people don't tend to remember words. They remember pictures. So if you draw them pictures, essentially, with the words, they will remember it a lot longer. And that brings me to the next strength of these high-performing people here, imagination. Seeing is believing. These people in the yes track, they get to that benefit first and profit from it. They can see the result rather than the obstacles. They paint hopeful mental images rather than fearful ones. And they do this even though there's a time crunch, even though other things seem to be much more important. These people understand the truth in what Einstein said. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. So you say imagination and a lot of things come to mind. Imagination sometimes brings to mind things like crayons and kids and sandbox and, you know, playtime. Not serious. But imagination is not just the realm of kids. And it's not just the realm of, you know, innovators that come up with the latest techno gadget every couple of months. Imagination is something that we all can use. It's a function of our brain, but we tend to let it get kind of soft as adults as we tend to rely on data and numbers and facts and words from the left side of the brain. If those data and, and numbers and facts and words don't add up into a picture, you know, it really isn't worth much because, like I say, people don't tend to remember the words individually. They remember the picture you paint with the words. If you can paint a hopeful and positive mental picture for the people you lead of what the change is going to look like once it's all done, you stand a much better chance of them following you there.